Manila and welcome to the largest and oldest temple of Confucius in the hometown of Confucius himself, Dining. Dining is a city that is, well, maybe well less known compared to cities like Beijing or Shanghai, but it is known as the cradle of Chinese civilization. And today we are here to learn about Confucius and the beginning of Chinese civilization. Let's go. Actually, the entrance is there. Let's go. <laughs> Ni hao! We're already inside and it is just so amazing. Wow, look! Okay, it is a little bit loud, so we're going to climb the stairs that is called Gao Shan Yang Chi. So, according to Bai Du translation, it means to behold the high mountain or a great man with awe. Basically, to see something great, you need to look up in a high point. Yeah, so something like that. So, for you to see me great, let's climb up the mountain. Okay, let's walk together. Let's go. This is Andy Hello. from previous video. <laughs> Okay, so we are in this room that looks like it's from Harry Potter. It's so beautiful. So as you can see here, all the statues, according to Andy, this is right there. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but he's there. Um, according to Andy, like these statues represent all the learnings that you can get from Confucianism. So the one that I just showed you a while ago teaches us to love each other as they were your brothers. Kind of like the same with um, a scripture in the Bible. I'm kind of blanking out right now. I can't really remember the Bible verse itself, but I think like it's all about like brotherly love and sisterly love. So there's a lot of statues here. I can't really tell you all the statues because it's very hard. It's all complicated because a lot of them have the Chinese and like the Chinese translation itself to English. It's very complicated and sometimes it loses the meaning. So uh, I think like we're just gonna go to another place. Let's go. Let's go. Pagod. Pagod na siya. We are now making the traditional scented sachets or xiangnang. The xiangnang is an important part of the incense culture in China. It's a folk embroidered craft created by ancient women, originally developed from pei nang, a small cloth pocket used to hold small things. Actually, I don't know what's this for. There are many uses for it traditionally. It's a tool for men and an accessory for women. In addition, sachets were also an important object for women to express their feelings. Aside from the tradition behind it, I like it because of the different scents and flavors I put in. To be honest, <laughs> I have no idea what herbs or dried flowers I pick. They just smell so nice. Now we are trying our hand at writing Chinese calligraphy, or rather, the art of writing Chinese characters. The Chinese red paper they provided has the word Fu on it, which means blessing or good fortune. You can find this paper or the word Fu mostly taped on the front doors of almost every Chinese home. Given that it's my first time, I think I did pretty good. My Fu looks so Fu. <laughs> What's the meaning? 
We means good luck with everything you, you want happen. It's good luck and wish you all the best. <laughs> Ramen sets at the end. second day here at Jini, the hometown of Confucius and we are staying at the village where he was born so we're gonna just take a look around because we didn't really get a chance to do that yesterday let's go take a look and feel the serenity that comes with this village let's go So we've been walking about like 30 minutes, give or take, and I just want to reflect on what I have absorbed here so far. So this entire trip or this entire video isn't really about learning about Confucius, it's just more of so learning about how tradition here in China began. From what we can see from that show yesterday, I hope the editors put that in because that is pretty important. So we could see all the customs and what do they do during what time, for example, the marriage. So wedding ceremony, so we saw an entire wedding ceremony on stage and all the little details that they have to do when that ceremony is happening. For example, like eating something and covering the face, that's a tiny detail that if you don't know the custom is overlooked. And there was one more that I find it fascinating was that like when men are 20 years old and then when women they turn 15, they do certain things as well. And then like at a certain age, the um, tradition, they need to do something else. Like for example, like 35, well according to the show, it's like when you are 35, you need to give back to your country and then serve your country. And then when you do great, then you leave home. Something in that sense. So like the show was pretty much a expression or a depiction of what Chinese culture is. So it's kind of pretty interesting. And to be in Confucius' hometown where his village was, or actually this is like already renovated, is pretty amazing and pretty mind-blowing, I guess that's the correct word. I'm gonna go ahead and find Andy, because I don't know where he is. Oh, I found him. <laughs> He's here. Hi. Hello. So, so far, what have you learned? Well, actually, you don't didn't they need to learn anything, because that's... This is your culture. But what did you learn? Anything uh, new? Uh, first, I think it's a very different experience to see what was in the book, uh, what we have learned from very young to be in reality, to see those figures and know more and deeper of the history. And it also brings back a lot of memory of myself, the time I'm learning. And it also let me cause like a turning to be an adult to relearn all these, uh, make me have a different understanding of what I've learned. Mm. 
、uh, and about the environment, the building itself. As an architect, this is really amazing. I would say it's like a very beautiful Chinese architecture environment or landscape. I'm very honored somehow that the, the, the current building technique, which is far, is so nice. Oh, and another thing I want to like、um, touch upon. So t- yesterday we watched a show, and then you said something like,、uh, "When you turn 30, you need to learn、uh, martial arts." Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So <laughs> another a funny thing that、um, I I I saw in the show is like when men become、uh, reach a certain age that's 30 years old, like you need to learn how to hunt,、um, do martial arts, do a lot of sports. That's the time that you should learn them, right? Right. Yeah. That's very interesting. It's like nowadays, like people are so focused on learning the sports. Before you reach thirty, and like in Chinese tradition, you need to learn it when you reach thirty years old.、Uh, it's kind of like a exact time time that、uh, you should, you should learn. Yeah, you should yeah. Learn, yeah. Like before thirty, you are a kid. Thirty,、yeah. better get your shit right. So interesting. <laughs> okay, let's continue walking a little bit more.